We journey to southern Ontario and Toronto, the provincial capital. Toronto is a rapidly expanding city. As the second largest city in Canada, in the center of the most highly populated area in Canada, and with access to cheap hydroelectric power, it has become an important industrial, trading, and financial center. Along with its growth, industrially and physically, it has assumed its responsibility as an educational and cultural center. Looking up one of its most impressive thoroughfares, University Avenue, we see Queen's Park and the Provincial Parliament buildings. Not far away is the University of Toronto, which has received world acclaim for its advances in education and its progress in the field of research and science. One of the things you would least expect to find in Canada is a castle, and yet here in Toronto is historic Casaloma. Architecturally reminiscent of the Middle Ages, it is now operated by a service club for dances, conventions, and as a tourist attraction. Everywhere you look today in Toronto, signs of expansion and building are in evidence. Increasing building, industry, and population have placed a great demand on housing. The city has spread far beyond its original boundaries in the search for industrial and residential development areas. Its strategic position makes it a natural site for the development of new industry and the construction of modern plants and buildings. The ever-increasing population, congested streets, and the difficult traffic situation prompted civic officials to build Canada's first subway. This, it is hoped, is only the first in a program of underground transportation, which will eventually provide complete subway service for Toronto, comparable to that in other major cities throughout the world. Not all of the subway track is underground, and where possible, open cuts have been used to move the trains from Toronto's harbor area to its terminal at the north central end of the city. Toronto's subway is just another sign of progress in this rapidly expanding Canadian city. Originally designed to permit traffic to bypass the city without delay on its busy streets, Highway 401 has suddenly found itself not on the outskirts of the city, but now well within the Toronto area, surrounded by industrial and residential development. Highway 400, the direct route to northern Ontario, has also opened new industrial area, among which is Eaton's of Canada's service building, one of the largest buildings of its type in the world. It is designed to add centralized efficiency to the Eaton system of merchandising and delivery. Internationally famous is the Canadian National Exhibition, the largest annual exhibition of its type in the world. The exhibition is held each year during the latter part of the summer and draws an average attendance of two and a half million people. One of the most important agricultural regions in Canada is the Niagara Peninsula. Here, peaches, grapes, cherries, apples, plums, pears, and small fruit yield bountiful crops. Modern methods of transportation and shipping bring Ontario's cities close to the vast orchards, 
and paved the way for a highly specialized industry of market gardening and canning. But apart from its economic importance, the Niagara Peninsula represents one of the most beautiful areas in all Canada. Its extensive growing season is due to the protection afforded by the Niagara Escarpment, which shelters it from frost and cold. Falling majestically from the escarpment, is world-famous Niagara Falls, feature attraction of a great tourist center. The falls, located on the border between the United States and Canada, draws hundreds of thousands of visitors each year from 